Hello and welcome to another Origins of Expressions. Today we'll be going over the phrases see eye to eye, turn a blind eye, a sight for sore eyes. What do they all have in common? They're all phrases and idioms around eyes. Let's go ahead and jump right into our video today. Your eye is the visual link to your brain. It's what helps us take the visuals that we see and convert it into information in our brain. We have used what we see to create great explanations of the world around us. And of course, if we're explaining or even describing what we see, you know we'll come up with idioms and phrases for what we see or just our eyes in general. Let's start with our first eye phrase. See eye to eye. See eye to eye means to agree with someone, to hold the same opinion as someone else, to understand each other. However, this phrase did not start out that way. It was meant to be at the same level as somebody. An example would be, I knelt down next to the lady that was sitting on the park bench so we could see eye to eye. We see this phrase being first used from a biblical passage in Isaiah chapter 52, verse 8 of the King James Version. For they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion. Just like the previous example, this did not mean they think similarly, but instead it means that they are at the same level and can see with their own eyes. Today, the idiom see eye to eye means to agree with someone, to think similarly, to be of one mind. We see an example of this phrase used this way in the mid 1900s. An example from 1938 in the Time Literary Supplement reads, the communist and the socialist will not see eye to eye with Dr. Igna. This phrase is still used to express that we share the same ideas and beliefs today. An example sentence is, I am so glad we see eye to eye on whom we should pick for department head. Well, now that we see eye to eye on that phrase, let's go ahead and move over to the next one. Turn a blind eye. To turn a blind eye means that you are knowingly ignoring something on which you know to be real and important. Uh, just turn a blind eye. This saying is said to have been around since the early 1800s, but what we find is there were sayings about blind eyes and not the phrase as an idiom. One famous example is in 1801, when Admiral Nelson is supposed to have said this willfully disobeying a signal to withdraw during a naval engagement. However, these stories of war heroes can be exaggerated a little. Instead of him saying, turn a blind eye, the historians think that he said, I have only one eye, and I have the right to be blind sometimes. The first record of to turn a blind eye used as an idiom was in 1832 by Miss Wilmot. In More Letters from Martha Wilmot, Impressions of Vienna, 1819 through 1829, and it read, Turn a blind eye and a deaf ear now and then, and we'll get on marvelously well. Before this idiom, we did have the saying, turn a deaf ear and the blind eye, back in the 1600s. It was Miss Wilmot who was the first to shorten it and swap it around to what we know today. Today, we use the phrase the same way, just to ignore that something is happening and blame it on not seeing it. An example sentence is, many landlords turn a blind eye to the fact that families are bringing small pets into the apartment complex. Well, let's let them enjoy their new family member as we move to the last phrase of the video. A sight for sore eyes. A sight for sore eyes means that you are happy to see someone or they make you happy to look at them. It can also be used as a compliment when you want to tell someone they look good. Aren't you a sight for sore eyes? This phrase was a bit different when it first started. It was used in the mid 1700s and it was a bit more formal. It read, the sight of you is good for sore eyes. As time went on, we shortened how we say it. The first written record of the modern way we use it was in the new monthly magazine in 1826 by William Hazlitt. It read, Garrick's name as proposed on condition he should act in tragedy and comedy. 
Whew, what a sight for sore eyes that would be. In the United States, they still use this idiom the same way to express that someone is pleasant to look at or you are happy to see them. An example sentence would be, Emily, aren't you a sight for sore eyes? I've missed you. However, in the UK, their version is a bit different. They use it when someone or something is unpleasant to look at. An example of this way of using the idiom is, that monstrosity of a building is a sight for sore eyes. It blocks our whole view of the beach. Make sure when you travel, you're using the saying in the right context or something might get a little messed up. Ooh, fun fact. Did you know that the average human blinks 12 times a minute? That's about one every four seconds. That means on average, you blink about 900 to 1200 times an hour or about 14,000 to 19,000 times a day. So in a week, you're blinking almost 134,000 times. And how about a year? In a year, it can be between five and seven million blinks. So because we know all this information, we know that the average human life, there's over a half a billion blinks. Too bad blinking wasn't considered an exercise, because if it was, my workout is done. Phew, time to close my eyes and take a nap. Well, that's the information I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed learning about where our idioms and phrases come from. If you did, I'd love to have you subscribe to the channel. I think a few more subscribers would be a sight for sore eyes. So thanks for subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate it. Oh yeah, quick question before you go. Do you know any idioms or phrases around eyes? Maybe you know other idioms or phrases on an entirely different subject. I'd love to see them. Leave them in the comments below. And you know if I use one of the phrases, I'll give you a shout out. Thanks again for watching and subscribing. I really appreciate your support. Until next time, bye.